Hello. Um, today's video, the only ever video I'm ever going to make on, on this is um, a Sokol 2D renderer slash game engine using only C and C++. Now, I program a little bit, but I am definitely not that good of a programmer. I mainly do robot shit, um, but I have not found any resources online on how to do a 3D graphics renderer or 2D graphics renderer in Sokol C. There's plenty in uh, Odin or Zip, but nothing just in Base C. So hopefully this can help. Um, this is going to require you to install Sokol. Um, from the GitHub, um, <laughs> from Amazing Flu. Um, pretty much, you just need to um, GitHub copy this into a directory, um, and then you're gonna have to install Ninja as well as uh, one of the utilities, um, wherever it is. Uh, so cool. Sokol slash or dash shdc. Uh -huh. You install that, um, and then you can just steal one of the um, examples from the website. So you go to live samples, and uh, the quad is particularly useful for 2D graphics rendering. Uh, you can just yoink this. Um, but to actually turn this into a usable game engine requires a bit of abstraction. So on top of the, um, how, how Sokol works is it abstracts the graphics rendering to an easy API. Um, so to get Sokol working, um, you have to, first initialize this description of um, the Sokol system. Um, pretty much that's all you need. <laughs> uh, so in this example, they set up SG setup. Um, the rest of this is just garbage. Um, this is from the documentation. You always follow this. Um, begin pass, apply pipeline, apply your bindings, draw. And this is for debug and pass commit for drawing. Um, you have a cleanup function for when you shut down. And then in main, this is your main here. Um, it creates an instance of this S app. And then you can put in functions here. So for instance, we have the cleanup function frame and init, cleanup frame and init. Um, but to actually get something drawing, you need to create some sort of buffer. In this instance, we have a vertex and an index buffer. Uh, you put your vertices into the buffer, you put your indices into the buffer, and then you create a shader, and then um, magic, uh, you can pass in, you can pass all your data into the shader. Um, and then you, this is stored into state.pip and state.bind.index buffer. And uh, you apply your pipeline, which applies your shaders, and then you apply your binding, and then it draws that. And that's basically how it always works. Um, so to abstract that a bit, I have some images that I load. Uh, this is a tile map image. This is a character image. These are um, just images. And then I create a vertex and an index buffer uh, based off of a max size. And these are di uh, usage stream, which means they're dynamic and they can be updated. OK, uh, we have textures, so we need a sampler. That just comes from the, um, the shader file. and then. 
you get plier shader, and then it does graphics magic to do um, rendering of our indexes. Uh, inside a frame, uh, we update our buffers based on data that's inside the buffers. And to put data in the buffers, we add some quads, which I have a function here that adds quads. Uh -huh. And all this does is it defines the four vertices based on the XY position that you pass into it from a sprite. I'm doing a 2D renderer, so I'm using sprites. Uh, these have XY positions as well as uh, UV for texture. If you don't know texture, don't gotta worry about that. Um, and then we create some indexes. Um, and all I'm doing is creating quads for everything. And then we just pass a texture, which is our image, into this quad textures. And then we render this quad textures. We have to bind the texture to the piece of our index and vertex buffers. And then it'll draw that image based on that quad position, size, etc. Um, back to frame. So we update our buffers. And then we just have a projection matrix that we set up a camera. Uh, and then in our shader, quad shader whatever it is, um, it takes in uh, a matrix and it determines the position based on the position of the object as well as the camera. I don't know. I don't really know sh uh, shader stuff. Uh, we begin our pass and then for all the quad counts we have, we apply the image of the quad texture. So if we're trying to draw player character, it might be quad count 5, and that'll be texture 5, and it binds it, it draws it, and then we end our pass. <laughs> Other than that, like, everything else that I've built on top of it is to draw sprites, so, oh, can I open audio? Oh, never mind. There we go. Working on that. Um, right now we have player that's drawn as the yellow Pikmin, and we have some tiles. Uh, so th that we're just building an array of quads and placing them in, in, in camera space. But I feel like the hardest thing of getting Sokol and C set up is just getting past the first hurdle of getting textures rendered onto objects and then you can start abstracting it into sprites and such and that's why I wanted to make this video to go over how to actually do that and I walked through it somewhat <laughs> um, this is all boilerplate you can copy this from basically an example I have decided to use Imgui, which is a C++ uh, repository library. So I forced the libel compile uh, to Sokol libraries to compile as C, and then I add my Imgui. Um, but that is why some of this is in C and some of this is in C++. So specifically, the uh, struct definitions of things that are inside of Sokol uh, need to be defined as such instead of from the example where everything is um, defined in this manner. Uh, we have to define it in this manner. Uh, I think it's actually cleaner because you don't have to worry about any of the brackets. You just define exactly which part of the structure that you want to set. So in this case, we're setting the texture width and the texture height. Uh, based on the data in here, and this is getting saved to tile map, and that's super easy. But essentially, yeah, we uh, create two textures. We create a single vertex and index buffer that are um, dynamic, so we can fill them. If you make it static, you can only put one thing inside, or it can't change, so you can never add or destroy objects. 
Um, then since we have textures that we're applying to objects, we need a sampler. Um, basically, you, you add this when you have textures, otherwise it wouldn't be here. And then everything would just be like a colored box that you have to define the color of. And then the, the shader and um, pipeline, it's pretty boilerplate. I added some transparency stuff. Uh, this is the definition of my sprites. Again, I'm not a good coder, so everything's messy, but it is what it is. So that's really all you need in in in, uh, in it is this this loading your texture, loading your uh, buffers, loading your pipeline and shader, and then of course the boilerplate uh, setting up the actual so cool. Whatever it is, I don't know. I don't know shit. Um, that's about it. Uh, I'll just go over frame again. <coughs> um, so we add a quad called the player instance. Um, and then this references the sprite we're trying to draw, and then the sprite will be passed into the quad textures and then that will get drawn inside of wherever my draw function is here we go goes through all the quads uh, applies the texture to them does the pipe uh, re, re binds re binds the pipeline applies the binding ex again applies the uv uniforms the draws ends the pass and then everything before the start of sg begin pass is just my game updating um, and you know uh, loading in data for it to render well that's everything uh, i hope this helped uh, you on your game building journey um who knows maybe I'll, i will provide updates in the future as i flesh out this game engine more <laughs> Um, I would like to make a 3D game engine, but, you know, you start in the second dimension and work your way up. Um, and that's pretty much everything. Take care. Bye.